I have 100 days to defeat Ark's hardest map, Ark Fjorda. Now, this involves killing the Alpha Broodmother, the Alpha Mega Pithkiss, the Alpha Dragon, as well as Alpha Fenra and all the world bosses. Will I be able to pull it off? Let's find out. And so it began like any other time. Waking up on the beach, except instead of this time looking at our implant, we woke up punching. We were raring to go and getting ready to absolutely dominate this map. But first we had to begin by dominating this dodo and showing it exactly Help who was me. boss. So I set Help out on trying me. to knock this out. And eventually it fell to my clumsy punches and we had successfully oh no. knocked out our first dino. I went ahead and gathered some basic resources so that I could make myself a basic pickaxe. After that, I went ahead and killed the unconscious dodo because it's vulnerable to my attacks, it can't fight back. I then went ahead, harvested a few extra ingredients that I was going to need and the basic hides, and I learned a bunch of engrams in the process as well. I then went ahead, harvested up some flint and a small amount of metal so that I could make myself a basic hatchet. I then took a second to admire my beautiful, bountiful what body. What is that? After admiring my buddy, some Microraptors also decided to admire it by biting into my butt cheeks while I ran down the cliffside, eventually, ultimately, killing me in the process. And then I found myself in a strange new item. Uh, what? How did I end up in a tank? Oh well, we might as well go ahead and blow some stuff up, right? Well, if you guys like blowing stuff up and driving around in tanks, then check out today's sponsor, World of Tanks. Step into the world of World of Tanks and experience the free-to-play thrill of tank warfare like never before. With over 600 historically accurate tanks to choose from, including tank destroyers, artillery, light, medium, and heavy tanks, the fun is endless. You can join me in World of Tanks using the link shown on the screen or in the description. But World of Tanks has over 15 million players that engage in intense 15 versus 15 multiplayer battles to prove their prowess with their machines. After winning in combat, use your new parts and weapons to upgrade your tank, making it even more powerful. As well as that, for a limited time, use code TANKMANIA to instantly get the Excelsior tank, a tier 5 monstrosity of a tank, as well as 250,000 credits. But that's not all. You'll also get 7 days premium access and 3 rental tanks for 10 matches. These 3 tanks include the Tiger wow. 131, the Cromwell wow. B, and the T3485M. Wow. So, what are you waiting for? Prove your supremacy and come join me in World of Tanks using the link down below and on the screen. After returning from World of Tanks, I killed myself in order to escape the cold because I had the bright idea of to travel to Asgard to try and stave off the cold. And well, you can see how well that went. Please, before they decide to eat me. Hello there. Oh God, no! <laughs> Fucking bastard. We were so close. So after finally finding a relatively peaceful spot on Asgard, I found a Mose Chops and thankfully we actually had a rare mushroom available to us to feed the Mose Chops and that pretty much sent it the rest of the way and then requested a Mijo Berry which we once again had and we got ourselves our first tank. A wonderful, beautiful, bountiful most chops. Now with this guy we could go ahead and harvest as many berries as we wanted and we decided to come up with a very fitting name for it, Toes. Give it up Toes boy! Come on Toes. <laughs> when daytime came around I decided to make my way to the beach to harvest up some of these wooden boxes as they actually gave us metal tools. So we got ourselves a metal hatchet, pickaxe and a crossbow from them. I then got to work at building myself a basic shelter. Pretty much so that I could survive a night on the normal Fjorda map instead of traveling to Asgard and it was just made out of thatch. I did put a storage box and a bed down so we could respawn here and then I got to work on getting some tames. And I managed to find this beautiful 150 Andrew Sarkis. So I got to work on trying to tame this big Chungus boy up. All you had to do was chuck some honey and follow the on-screen prompts in the direction in order to tame up this big hefty boy. Now, things were going great so far with our 150. We weren't having any issues in terms of taming it up, and it also had amazing stats. That was until <sighs> this bastard of a seagull appeared. Here so the seagull again. had attacked it and reset it back to zero, so I got to work on finishing it, well, restarting the tame and trying to tame it again. However, this time, there were some challenges. Uh, it was not happy with me trying to tame it, as you can see. Here we go again. Ooh! So, it killed us multiple times, but thankfully we were able we to again. finally get 
this guy tamed up. Uh, hey, let's go. Got our first Andrew Sarkis. Woo. I then went ahead and gave it a name as our first Andrew Sarkis needed something super, super basic because that's the kind of pleb that we are. And we decided to call it Andrew. How boring, I know. I then took a look at its stats and was kind of blown away. An insane amount of health, an insane amount of melee damage for our first Andrew Sarkis. I then went on a spree taming up a bunch of different low level females because they would be able to breed with our new male. I then went ahead and named our two new female Andrew Sarkis's and that was Pork and Loin. Now I feel like these were super fitting names and then I went ahead and started building a more permanent sort of base that we could actually use and something that wouldn't get destroyed at a dodo sneezing at. So after slowly building up the wood base, I managed to chuck a mortar and pestle in and get some narcotics brewing when an unwanted guest arrived. Shit. I'm just trying to cut. No! No! Oh shit, the baby. The baby. The baby. Let's get it. We might lose a female here. Oh, where's my saw balls? So much me! Give me a ball! I'm stuck. What the? Oh, are you serious? Get him, fellas. Can't see what's going on. Someone killed the damn thing. Bro, why is my whistle not working? What is going on? Alright, we need a ball. No. Why are you... Stop. Yo, what the heck? <laughs> Can we please kill it? Okay. Woo, that was close. After that kerfuffle, I went ahead and tamed up another higher level female. All the other ones were lower levels. I think they were like level 20s. This was a level 50. And then I went ahead and started expanding the wooden base. Adding some extra walls, making it too high, and then putting the ceilings on it as well. I also went ahead and put down some refining forges as I needed to cook metal, and then I found a metal note and went and harvested up a bunch of that. I brought the metal back to base to get it cooking up, and then I decided to take our Andrew Sarkis out for a bit of a test run in the fields to see how much damage it would do and see how it would hold up against fighting other Andrew Sarkises. I was pleasantly surprised at how much damage we were doing and at the beefiness and tankiness of these big piggy boys. They were dealing a decent amount of damage and they also had quite a large amount of health. I then went ahead and found an Alpha Raptor and thought I'd give that a go when a Stego decided to absolutely nuke me and my Andrew Sarkis, pulling me off my Andrew Sarkis and just absolutely wailing into them. Now, mind you, this Stego, it just had to be a 150 and it had to have a bunch of friends around it to help it out. This guy was one of the tankiest bloody Stegos I had ever fought. And it was buffed by the Alpha Raptor as well, for some reason, because, you know, it's an Alpha Raptor getting buffed by a Stego, which makes total sense. So after lo almost losing our Andrew Sarkis, I decided to get the hell out of there as fast as I could, but not before the Stego almost freaking murdered me. I did pass out, however, and then something else decided to come along and finish the job. So that was a super fun experience with Stegos. To come back to life, I continued breeding my Andrew Sarkis, trying to get the stats that I wanted for uh, the first 150 into a new offspring so that I could imprint on it. It was a slow and tedious process, however, and I wasn't having too much luck at the base when I spotted something in the distance. Oh! Um, um, I don't know if you guys saw that. That's a freaking giga right there. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, um, um. Yep, so I wasn't returning there for a while. So I set up a little one by one stone shack on the beach. Sir, I've come to exchange words. Sir? I mean, Karen? Ma'am? Mrs? M miss? I've come to exchange words and fisticuffs. I challenge you to a duel. I bet you I can get a punch on. Oh, let's fucking go. Whoa. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting to get that many hits in, if I'm being completely honest. The next day I went ahead and started taming up some more Andrew Sarkis, starting with this level 15 female. 
She did get uh, tamed right in front of an aloe, so that could have been dangerous, but we did manage to get away successfully. And then I found another Andrusarchus to tame up. I wanted to get a bunch of females so that I could breed them all with my 150 tamed male as I was trying to get the offspring of my dreams and desires. And unfortunately, this first one wasn't what I was looking for. It did have the melee damage and the health, but not the stamina, whereas this one right here had exactly what we wanted. So I went ahead and killed all the offspring that didn't meet my expectations. I know, I'm such a wonderful, inspiring parent. You can thank me later. So we went ahead continuing to kill them all. They did give us a decent chunk of XP, but I obviously had to cull some more of the failing offspring. They just once again did not meet my expectations. And I managed to get a very good Andrew Sarkis with the stats that I needed. I then journeyed out to a separate part of the map in hopes to try and tame a Fjordhawk. Now these guys were going to be great for really anything that I wanted to do. As when you die, they bring your body bag back over to you. However, in order to tame them, you need to feed them corpses and they can be rather annoying and the taming progress takes absolutely forever. So this one Fjordorc that I had my eye on was slowly getting tamed up with the various corpses that I brought it and then it brought a bunch of friends along to eat the corpses alongside it, which isn't the most ideal thing. Now, due to the cold, I did die before getting a sleeping bag down, which sucks. However, I was able to respawn and I did find this Bracky here. So I got to work trying to take it on. Now, Brackies are part of the Arc Conditions mod, which we were running on the server. So I figured, you know what, let's do it. And then it did its stomp attack and absolutely nuked me and the Fjordhawks that were around it. So I ended up losing all the progress on that Fjordhawk that I had spent feeding the corpses, which is absolutely wonderful. After force feeding my Andrew Sarkis, I returned back to the Brachio in order to fell it like the great big beast that it is, and I successfully killed it. Now, after killing it, I had a couple of field hawks that were on the tracking bar, and they started feasting on the Brachio. And just like that, we had managed to tame our first field orc. There was also a 140 that managed to get halfway, but I was just ecstatic that I managed to get one field hawk. So I found another Bracky and decided to kill this one as well in the process. However, this one was much further away from the 140 and I had to bring it over. And there were also a bunch of dangers in the area. Raptor was also trying to harvest it for itself and me in the process and I almost died. Thankfully, however, the Fjordhawk did eventually come over and start feasting on the Bracky and I did manage to tame up a 140 female. With that, I had successfully tamed up a breeding pair of Fjordhawks, and I thought I'd grab an extra one just while we had the Bracky corpse hanging in the area. And just like that, I had tamed three Brackies, which was incredible. I then decided to kill myself, get back to base, and test out the Fjordhawks travel capacity. The next day began with me doing a medal run with our brand new Fjordhawk, and I died allowing myself to transfer the medal back to my base and getting it into my refining forges. Now, the wood base was successfully safe once again due to the fact that the Giga was gone, so I did return here in order to utilize the forges. And the Fjordhawk was amazing. I decided to test my luck and try and get a Rock Drake egg with the Fjordhawk. However, the radiation damage killed me before I could grab the egg, so I returned and this time I was successful at grabbing myself a Rock Drake egg. I managed to get the Rock Drake egg and then the Rock Drakes came along. I wasn't going to make it out of there alive due to the radiation damage, so the Rock Drakes went ahead and killed me and my Fjordhawk brought me my egg. Just like that, we had gotten ourselves a Rock Drake egg super easily. I was ecstatic. Now, I returned back to the base. However, mistakes were made at which base it was. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. No! Oh, that's so horrible. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. He got roasted. He got roasted, the poor little dude. I feel so bad for him. I'm sorry, little guy. I didn't even think about the forges killing you. So after already losing my first Fjordhawk, I decided to breed the last two that I had, which was the level 20 male and the 140 female, and we got this little offspring at 155. 
the cutest little bastard you ever did see. So I mainly focused on making sure that this Fjordhawk was going to raise up. I also kept breeding our Andrew Sarkises for more offspring so that we could keep fueling our Andrew Sarkis army. Now I put a smithy down in our temporary wood hut over there and made myself a bunch of flak armor so that I had something a little bit more sturdier to protect myself from the elements of Ark. Now I went ahead and took on some alpha raptors because I was just farming up some rune stones and testing out the capacity of our Andrusarchus a little bit more. And the Andrusarchus actually has a slight knockback attack, which made defeating these Raptors uh, easier because our Andrusarchus had taken quite a few hits and uh, it was precariously low when we killed this 150 Alpha Raptor. I did find a Yellow Drop managing to get a Stego Saddle as well as an Anki Saddle. So I was pretty happy about that. And I went ahead and farmed up some of the Beaver Dance for the cementing pace. With the Andrew Sarkis being a great swimmer, this made it super easy to get to the dams and get away with the payload of cementing paste. So things were looking pretty well at this stage, managing to get quite a few of the beaver dams in the process. I then finished the day off by trying to get some decent Danonicus eggs and didn't have too much luck in that regard. The next day we ventured out into the swamp to gather some organic polymer. I did need some of it to make the Andrew Sarkis saddle, which is the main reason why we were out here. And it was just a super easy way to go about getting a bunch of organic polymer in the process. I stopped by on the way back to the base, getting a nice red drop with some saddles in it. And then we finally made our Andrew Sarkis saddle. I was super happy about that. Now I did also go ahead and mine some obsidian up as I was gonna need that to make the harpoon launcher and to make some nets because I had the plan to try and tame our first flyer. And uh, it was it was gonna be something challenging, but hopefully I could get it done. And the Andrew Sarkis saddle was made up and I love this thing. So I then went ahead and went to get my first flyer tamed up and I had found this 150 Snow Owl. Now I had spent some time knocking it out before launching the net gun with it because I didn't want it to wake up out of the net and actually fly off and then us not be able to trank it. So I got it halfway and then finished the tranking and tamed it up. Beautiful 224 Snow Owl, it was amazing. I then went ahead and took on these Alpha Lead Scythicuses because they are one of the best sources for rune stones in my opinion. You normally get about 20 from killing an Alpha Lead Scythicus. So there were two in the vicinity. So I managed to kill the first one and a horde of Megalodons and Mantis were coming at me. And our Androsarchus also slingshotted to the top of the ocean and left me stranded where I died to a bunch of Megalodons. Now, obviously with me dying in the process, you can imagine how well it fared for my Androsarchus being out there by itself. Lechonk had met its demise. I was not happy. I don't know where all these Megalodons are. Their aggro range was just ridiculous. Same with the Mantas. So I ventured out to get my body and try and get Lechonk's saddle back. And you can imagine how well that went. Like, why are they aggroing on me for? I fucking did nothing. The next day, I needed to get revenge once again on some sea creatures for what they had done to me and Lechonk previously. So first off, I started by getting a bunch of oil as I was planning on making a fabricator today and trying to find a more permanent base spot. And then the carnage began. I was ready to absolutely murder every living bloody thing in the ocean at this stage. These guys had caused me so much pain and so much grief. Lechonk was our OG bred baby that had both the stats of the father put into it. So the strong health and the strong melee damage. Luckily, we did have multiples of that. So we did have an Androsarchus to replace Lechonk with, but that's not the point. Lechonk still died because we got swarmed by a bunch of Megalodons and Mantis for no reasons whatsoever. They were not involved in the Alpha Lead Scythicus fight. So I don't know why they did. Nonetheless, we made the Fabricator and we were good to go. I was planning on moving base today. So I did make a bunch of Smithies and an extra Fabricator as well as some electronics so that I could make a generator. I then went out and found a 140 Danonicus egg as I did want to use Danonicus's for the Dragon Boss. I then went ahead and helped a player with an Alpha Raptor on the server. And then I found another player's base. And I wanted to take a quick look at because these servers are public so you guys can join. And you can also sign up to the Patreon as well if you are keen on joining the servers. I was real quick guys as well. I just wanted to say take a quick look at my Patreon. This will grant you access to the servers that I play on and record these 100 days on. So if you feel like supporting me a little bit extra, feel free to check out the Patreon. It's there in the link in the description below. Thanks very much guys and let's get on with the video. Really blown away by how 
amazing the stables was and I was like, I'm going to use that for later. I then found my base spot located in Asgard. This was the, uh, like the head hall, I guess you could call it, located near the obelisk. The next day was moving day, so I wanted to make sure I had everything ready for our new base spot. I had fridges and everything that we could possibly need. I then found a 150 Anki that I wanted to knock out and start taming while we were setting up the base. That way, by the time we had finished setting up the base, the Anki would be ready to tame up. We could do a metal run and call it quits for the day. So the 150 Anki went down really easily. Obviously, you can just outrun these guys. They're not really too much of an issue. And then I found myself a level 55 Dodicarus and got to work on knocking that out. Same principle here. We get it knocked out. We come back when the base is all done and we'll have a tamed Dodic that we can use to gather resources. Beautiful. I then got to work on the base. Now, I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to use foundations for the inside of this. Getting foundations snapped in on this building was a pain in the butt. I managed to put some down and tamed up the Dodicarus as well. I then teleported back to the mainland and got jumped by an Alpha Kano. Thankfully, I was able to make it away with our Snow Owl, but that, that could have been very dangerous. Returning back to Asgard, I did find a 140 Mammoth, and obviously you can see where this is going. We went ahead and started knocking out the 140 Mammoth. Netted it, knocked it out, we were super happy about that. We had our resource gatherers, and we had a vault in our base, which meant we could store everything. Anki had successfully tamed up as well, and I took it on a metal run. I was very happy with how everything was going. I continued setting up the new base by putting down some refining forges, a smithy, some doors, as well as setting up a small breeding pen in the back for our Andrew Sarkis's and Fjord Hawks. There was a trough here as well as a soul terminal, so we had plenty of space to do a little bit of breeding with the tames that we currently had. I was also working on a second floor as I did plan to put an industrial forge up here as well. So I finished placing down the rest of the items that I needed, such as a fridge and two preserving bins, so that we would have, obviously, storage for our food items, as well as the generator and air cons, so that we could hatch any eggs that were collected by the salt terminals. I also wanted to test to see if we could incubate the rock drake egg that we got earlier, and successfully we were. I then returned back to the rock drake trench to try and get myself another egg, as we had set up successfully. Had my fjord hawk when I was struggling to get up here, and died tragically in the process. After incubating my eggs, I threw out the new 140 Deinonychus and the 95 Rock Drake that we had gotten earlier, and the Rock Drake came out yellow and purple. It looked absolutely awesome. I was super happy with the colors on the Rock Drake. I also threw out a couple of extra Deinonychus eggs that I had uh, received and decided to try and raise those guys up. The next day was Desmodus Taming Day. So I made my way out to the cave where they're located and I found myself a 150 Desmodus. Now, I was severely underprepared for the process of taming a Desmodus. I can tell you that much right now. I died a lot and I also failed to set up sleeping bags many, many times. So I got to work trying to kill some of the local wildlife and literally the first time I get hit by an Onik is the one time I contract Mega Rabies. So I also had brought Toes along as I was going to sacrifice Toes in order to get a higher effective Bat Tame. And then I realized that you literally get like 0.1 of a percent every second and it just really was not worth it. So I went ahead and sacrificed myself with my Blood Packs in order to try and tame up some Desmoduses. And it resulted in me dying quite a lot in trying to tame them. Obviously being in the sky, I was hoping that our snow owl would be able to catch us and I could fly on it and not plummet to my death every single time I was trying to tame one of these guys up. But obviously, as you can tell, that was definitely not the case and it resulted in me dying like 10 times, 10 times. I did learn after the first time, however, to set up some sleeping bags, but I did successfully manage to tame up my first Desmodus bat. And honestly, it was absolutely worth it because the stats that it got was absolutely incredible. 44 health and 36 melee damage. I then tamed up another Desmodus, so we now successfully had a breeding pair. There was another 145, went ahead, tamed that one up as well. I was slowly accumulating my army of bats to take over the server. But I was super happy with the stats that we got on our Desmoduses, and then I realized that we could hang them upside down in our base. And I also called them Vlad and Isabella. 
I went ahead, took them for a bit of a test run to see how much damage we could do. This was with the one that had the 36 points in melee damage and the 44 health. And I was pleasantly surprised at how much damage it was doing to the Daedon. As well as that, we were also getting the blood packs and healing ourselves in the process. These guys were amazing. The next day, I had a goal in mind. To tame a Giga. So to do that, I had to go ahead and prepare a bunch of resources. So I did multiple resource runs with my Mammoth, my Anki, and that was pretty much, and the Dodic. I did do a little bit of gathering with the Dodic, but mainly with the Anki on Metal, Flint, Stone, obviously the Narco Berries, and with the Fjordhawk, we were able to travel back to base quite easily, I would say. We did lose a couple of stacks of metal in the process, but it wasn't really too big of a deal. And I also made myself a chem bench so that we could place that down and get some of the uh, narcotics crafted up quite quickly because we only had two mortar and pestles and it really wasn't cut out for the job. So I placed my chem bench down and then I headed out to try and tame the Giga. Now it was only a level 90 female Giga and I genuinely thought you could net them. Turns out you can't net Gigas. I, I, I didn't have a clue about that. So after that embarrassing experience, I went back to the standard way of trapping it with some bear traps and then putting the gateways around it. And uh, well, that, that also didn't pan out how well I uh, wanted it. Luckily my old base was just up the beachway here, so we didn't really have far to run when the Giga killed us. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that went well. Luckily our Fjordhawk was able to gather our body, so we didn't really lose it, but we did lose our Desmodus, unfortunately, because we were flying on it and it got killed. And then for the life of me, this, this Giga just did not want to cooperate whatsoever. It would just not get in the trap. It was so frustrating. But thankfully, I did finally manage to get it trapped and knocked out as well. And then began the process of taming it. And just like that, with a Sanguine Alexa and some Prime Meat, we had tamed ourselves our first uh, Giga. Now, there was only one downside of this. I wasn't high enough level to craft its saddle. So thankfully, a uh, pal on the server did make us a saddle so we could ride around on our newly named Chompet Giga. And then I took it out on a bit of a test run to see just how strong she was. And I was very impressed with the numbers that she was hitting for. We did put a few levels into her melee damage, but she was hitting for 600 damage. The next day, I made some very, very poor decisions. I thought I could take on Baylor with Chompet. A level 90 tamed Giga and, uh, well, Chompet and some bullets was my goal here. And Chompet had already taken a huge amount of damage from the Dire Bears in the cave. Nonetheless, that did not stop us from attempting to take on Baylor with Chompet and our Andrew Sarkis. And as you can see, it, uh, it wasn't looking too well. Chompet was struggling to get some hits in and I was just standing there in the corner being absolutely useless. We did manage to do a decent amount of damage to it, but I didn't want to risk losing Chompet, so I, I had to make the decision to Soul Gun up Chompet. I also threw out my Snow Owl to try and help as well, because I figured, you know what, that might also do some extra damage. Chompet was struggling to hit, obviously, because we're not even riding on Chompet as well. That was another bad decision on my part. And our Snow Owl was, it was, it was trying to help. I ended up kiting Baylor out of the cave bit, and we did end up resetting her health as well. Now, once I headed back to base, I got breeding some more because I was figured, you know what, we could probably get away with using an Andrew Sarkis army to take on Baylor as well as some of the other world bosses. We did get some purple mutations in our Andrew Sarkises as well. And I also threw out the Desmodus babies that we had from breeding our Desmoduses up from uh, taming them the other day. Uh, safe to say we had quite a menagerie of cute little dudes here in front of us. They were all super adorable. I love their little baby forms. They look so cute. So I had to get those guys bred up and raised. And while that happened, I went to the Rock Drake Trench to f try and find a decent Rock Drake egg. Man, I, I struggled so long trying to find a decent Rock Drake egg. Luckily, we did have the awesome Spyglass mod so we could actually see what level the eggs were before actually needing to like get off and, and check the eggs like that the old fashioned way. Because obviously the radiation would have killed us. Now, our Andrew Sarkis here was the goat at going around and checking all the rock drake eggs because we were able to outrun the drakes, which meant we could check out the eggs and, and whatnot. So that made things a little bit easier. But I did find a 175 wild drake, and on the way out, I did get caught up on a drake. And you can imagine what happened next. Lechonk, mate, it was a pleasure. 
You've served us well. Yeah, he's dead. Damn. I didn't want Lechonk to die. After having no luck with the Rock Drake eggs, I thought I'd try my luck with some Shadow Main. So I got to work setting up some traps, trapping some fish with the cage method, where you put the cage over the fish and then you stick the trap next to them. I got quite a lot of fish tamed up. Yeah, because you, you, you do tame them when they get in the fish basket, because you can put them out and they've got the little green lights. So I went ahead, tamed up a bunch of saber tooth Salmon and started feeding a level 95 female shadow mate. Now the reason I tamed up this level 95 female was because we had found the 150 male but I wanted a breeding pet so I needed to female for that obviously and this is why we went ahead and tamed up this female in the process and just like that she was tamed. Now I couldn't find the 150 male that we had found earlier but I did find this 145 male and successfully tamed him up. I genuinely hate trying to tame up shadow mains. They are such a pain in the ass, and I'm pretty sure they're still bugged where you have to feed the multiple fish for them to actually count towards their taming bar. Nonetheless though, this male Shadow Main was still partially decent. It had decent stats, it wasn't anything mind-blowingly amazing, but I got them back to base and started breeding them. The next day, I had managed to breed up a mutated Shadow Main with a sick color, so I wanted to take a look at that, and then... It was time for the battle against Baylor. Now I had brought the extra Desmoduses and the extra Androsarcuses that I had raised up, as well as Chompet once again, to try and take out Baylor. Man, uh, just, uh, I, I severely underprepared for this multiple times, and each time you think I would have learned my lesson. You think I would have learned my lesson. Now, after losing all those initial tames, there was still hope with Chompet and my Androsarcus alive until it died and until I died. And just like that, we had lost again to Baylor and lost Chompet in the process. Now, I went back to base and built a little area for our Shadow Mains so that they had a little pen in order to breed on. And that pretty much wrapped up that little <laughs> journey. You'd think I would have learned the first time I fought Baylor, but nope, definitely didn't. I also placed down our industrial forge. The morning of the next day I spent going around gathering a bunch of Deinonychus eggs. I was hoping to find a high level one, but unfortunately didn't really find anything too interesting. There was a couple of level 50s, a couple of level 20s, but nothing incredible. Because, you know, I wanted to be able to breed some Deinonychuses in order to take on the dragon. You know, the Deinonychus are one of the best dinos for the dragon. But I also accidentally, well I didn't accidentally, I killed this 150 Rex that had god tier stats and while traveling along thinking I'd be safe jumping into this pond of water, I ended up nice. killing my Andrew Sarkis, which is absolutely bloody wonderful from fall damage. I then spent the rest of the afternoon watching a poor player on my server try and take on Haiti and Skjol and well it's, uh, it's safe to say they did manage to take out one of them. However, the other one just proved to be too difficult and they were unable to kill both of them. They still got the loot from the other one though, which is good. The next night I went ahead and started breeding up some more Androsarcuses as my stock was getting slightly lower from them, constantly dying. And then I tried my luck at getting some Lightning Wyvern eggs. I wasn't having any luck getting Rock Drake eggs, so I figured what the hell. Let's try and get a Lightning Wyvern egg. They're right in the vicinity, should be A-OK, -okay, right? We've got a Snow Owl, we can Dive Bomb, we can should be able to outfly them all. We should be A-OK, -okay, right? No, I was very wrong. As you can see here, our Snow Owl almost died, literally sitting on like 20 health before the turrets managed to shoot our uh, the Wyvern down, which is great. And then it was just a, it was just a constant stream of death, destruction, and decay. It wasn't it wasn't a good time. It wasn't a good time. We did bring a couple of other people on the server to help us out, but <laughs> this Wyvern still shooting at me as it's dying, which is always a great sign. So I. Purely just kept trying to kite them back towards the turrets. I didn't actually know how many bullets were in the turrets, to be honest. But there was a 175 Lightning Wyvern here that I was really keen on trying to find an egg for. Was really keen on trying to find that egg. If only it wasn't going to be so damn difficult to do so. My PT's so fucking dead. <laughs> no! I think my turrets... Oh, fuck off. I think, oh man, this is great. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Can something just go right? I just want a fucking egg! After losing some flies, I decided to bring my snow oil back out as it had healed and take it straight into the trench. 
<sighs> Bro, there's no eggs in here. 25? Are you kidding me? We got level 180 wyverns in here and shit, and there's no freaking eggs. Like, bro, what the hell? That's so dumb. Fucking hell. I can't believe there's no eggs. The next day, I had stumbled across a female 150 giga, and I got to work and knocking that thing out ASAP. Now, another person on the server, Red Eye, did have a male giga as well. That was a 150. So the plan was to tame up this one and breed the two gigas together and get our line of gigas established from those two gigas. This was a bit of a tedious process getting the Giga knocked out, but nonetheless, you've seen a Giga get knocked out before, you know how it goes. So we managed to get the Giga knocked out and tamed up as well. Now, once we had seen the Giga's stats, we actually got really lucky. It came out with 36 HP and the male that we were breeding it with actually had 35 melee damage. So we got the two best stats that you could possibly get on a Giga and that was the best part about this. So we got to work and bred the two Giga's up together. After taming up the Giga, we called it Magmet, and we decided to test its battle capacity by taking it up against a level 90 Alpha T-Rex. Now, this one hadn't been imprinted or anything, this was our pure wild one, and uh, I, I figured it would be a decent challenge for it to take on the Alpha Rex. We did a very solid amount of damage considering how much health the Rex had, but in the end, we did manage to defeat the Rex. Although, like I said, it did cost us quite a bit of our health, but it was well worth it for the runestones that we got from the Alpha T-Rex, as well as the XP. Then spend the rest of the afternoon obviously going around killing a bunch of things with our brand new Giga, because who doesn't love to do that? I then spent some time in the Redwoods Cave hitting up some of the loot drops for some decent loot, but this is where the loot really came out to shine. I found an Ascendant Rex saddle in a red drop, and this Rex saddle was awesome. Now, obviously it was Ascendant, but it had a heap of armor with it, and it was relatively cheap considering it was Ascendant, but it didn't end there. I then found a blueprint for an Ascendant long neck rifle as well. It was awesome. I was super glad with that cave. The next day was jammed, packed with taming as there was an event going on and I wanted to try and get some event colored dinos. But first off, I found this 150 aloe that had a bunch of HP in it and a bunch of melee damage in it. So I got to work knocking that out with my Desmodus, me flying around on it using the weapon on the back of it. Thankfully, the Desmodus has allowed that. And I began the very tedious process of trying to chase a fleeing aloe down so that I could trink it. Eventually it did get knocked out and then I found a level 60 Alpha T-Rex and figured, you know what, we can take this with Lechonk and our Desmodus. So I got to work taking out this Alpha T-Rex, eventually defeating it, but our Andrew Sarkis had taken quite a bit of damage in the process, but it was well worth it for the extra rune stones. I then found an Alpha Kino and showed it who was the boss by killing that as well. I then made my way to the Desmodus cave because I wanted a bunch of fancy colored bats to fly around on because, you know, they're not supposed to be camouflaged or anything like that. So I went ahead trying to tame up a couple of low level ones. There wasn't anything amazing. There was a 145, but I wanted the lower level ones because they had the cooler colors. So I tamed myself a mint green level 20 Desmodus, and then we tamed up the other 145 Desmodus as well. I figured I'd take a look at their stats as well because you never know, we might find ones that are better. And this one actually had 36 melee damage, which was great. I then went ahead and tamed up another lime green Desmodus at level 20. So I had to try and consolidate all those together and there was a purple Desmodus here that I also wanted. But it also wanted my booty and decided to eat me. Thankfully I did have some sleeping bags in the area for once. I know it's a goddamn miracle. It only happens literally once every lifetime. So I got back to work trying to tame up the Desmoduses. I was hoping that this one was going to catch me midair. Instead it just broke my flak armor and caused me to die again. I did lose my Desmodus in the process, and with that, I didn't have a sleeping bag in the cave, so I had to get back there on foot with our Andrew Sarkis, but I was thankfully able to die once again to this Desmodus. Lots of dying when it comes to Desmoduses. I just haven't nailed that, and it wow. caught me mid-air to finish off the tame in one of the most stylish tames I think I've ever done, where I've been dropped and then caught mid-air. And then it was a battle to try and get out of there without dying, which obviously that's not going to happen. It's me we're talking about here. 
I did manage to tame up another Desmodus, and with that, I was very happy with my Desmodus tames. I returned back to the aloe, chucked a bunch of prime meat into it, and then went ahead and tamed that 150 aloe up as well. And it had great melee damage. To finish up the day, I found some Andrusarcuses that I wanted to tame up that had some sick looking colors on them, and I thought I could introduce them into my lines because I already had really good stats. So I managed to tame up this blue and red one, but I got jumped on by goddamn Terrabo. These bastards came out of nowhere. Now, I was worried here that I was going to kill my own Andrusarcus if I decided to run around trying to stab the big bird with a bloody stick, but thankfully we were able to kill the Terror Bird with minimal casualties. Now, I also tamed up this yellow, purple, and red Andrusarcus, which I thought looked sick as well. The next day, I returned to my favorite place ever. <laughs> no, that is not true. The Rock Drake Trench. I really wanted a goddamn decent Rock Drake, right? Like, I don't know why it was so difficult. We had 170s, 180s, but no eggs. It was so gut-wrenchingly annoying. And look at the cool colors on them. Just pure, unadulterated frustration. It was just so annoying. I just could not find a decent rock drake egg. There were high level rock drakes, but no decent eggs. So I gave up on that adventure and went back to the lightning wyverns. Now me being the absolute genius, bright, dumbass that I am, did not think to take the Desmodus the first time around with his cloaking ability. No, I didn't think that far ahead. This time, however, I was two steps ahead of myself and I brought my Desmodus. So I used my Desmodus to scout out the Lightning Wyvern Trench and unfortunately found nothing. I also did the same thing with the Poison Wyvern Trench. Mind you, once again, there were also very high level Wyverns, but no eggs. So severely disappointed at the prospect of trying to obtain an egg for myself. Super annoying, super frustrating, nothing bloody happened. I didn't get any eggs anywhere. It was really annoying. I then returned to the Rock Drake Trench to try and clear out some of the Rock Drakes so we could get high level ones in. And Magnet made an absolute slurry of their insides right on the field in front of us. So that was great. Having Magnet along for the journey definitely made things a lot easier in the process. Because I wanted to clear out the nest to get some more eggs brought in. The next day continued with more taming, except this time it was for Maywings. Now I did bring out the Harpoon Launcher and the Net Gun in order to get some of these guys. And uh, you can see here this level 61 with the blight blue wings, blighted wings? That doesn't make sense. With the blue wings, only took two darts before it got knocked out with our, uh, with our very strong long neck rifle that we had. And then we tamed up our milk maker ready to go. I then found a 135 Maywing and got that netted as well. Now, this one was a much more difficult one than the last one. For some reason, it just did not want to get trained. Where are you going, mate? <laughs> Cool. Two darts gone and none hit. There we go. About bloody time. I don't. Do they take headshots multiplies? I don't remember. Haha, <laughs> you actually have to be able to hit the head for that to happen. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's wonderful. It's gonna wake up before I can freaking knock it out. It's gonna get out of the damn net. All right. And then I found my golden goose, a 150 R thylacolio. And you guys know, I just had to tame myself up one of these Aussie animals. I just needed to. Luckily, the trees were holding it back. It, I was just too much of an intimidating threat for it to actually break through the trees. It was too scared of me. And that's why I just hung back there getting trained out. I had to find some ovus in order to get some mudden to cook up the mudden in order to tame up the thyla. I grabbed myself an ovus, harvested it up, took it back to base to cook up and then returned to the thyla in order to tame it up. Now, because it was an R thyla, we were gonna need to find another R thyla male. We couldn't just use a normal thyla. And these guys take forever to tame up and their taming effectiveness drops so much. And I also forgot to use a sanguine Alexa, by the way, which would have actually saved us quite a bit of taming effectiveness. So that's annoying. But it did tame up nonetheless, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, it had pretty disappointing stats. I was expecting some great stats on it, and it, it didn't have the greatest of stats. 32 melee damage and 24 health. Not the greatest, but I decided to test it out anyway. And what better thing to test it out on than a goddamn Giga? That's right, I'm just that brave, heroic, charming, daring, beautiful, you might even say. I might be pushing it now. Nonetheless, we did start doing laps around this Giga in order to try and defeat it. Due to the Thyla's unique ability to bleed its victims based on their health, I figured the Thyla's bleed attack would be a worthy competitor to the Giga's damage and health. 
Thankfully for me though, the Giga was unable to uh, complete the loop-de-loop -loop properly, so we could just keep doing laps around it, and it was actually unable to hit us, which obviously is a great advantage for us when we're trying to kill this monstrous thing that could kill me in a couple of hits. Massively, but like, doesn't matter, it's dying. I could tame it up and use it to breed our females and, and we could imprint on it, but I want a higher level one. I'm being greedy here. Our thyla is looking solid as. Half health. We keep this Nash effect up and we're fine. It can't hit us. <laughs> I love this. This is so good. <laughs> oh man, this is why you don't underestimate dinos with the bleed effect. So I'm, I'm going to try and probably use some thylas on bosses, I reckon. I just can't remember off the top of my head if bosses take... Ooh, I'm going to be a bit careful. I don't remember if they're immune to the bleed effect or not. Where is it going? Is it running away from us because it can't hit us? I think so. It's going to attack our base. Alright, this thing's almost dead. It didn't enrage. I, is that still an effect? Like, I haven't seen a Giga enrage in so long. Did they get rid of that? Oh shit, we're bleeding now. It's dead, we killed it. We didn't get the kill though. The next morning began with me taking on an Alpha Kano and the Alpha Kano absolutely kicking my ass in the process. The bleed damage that the Kano was doing was absolutely nuking me. I, I thought the, the roles were gonna be reversed after the Giga fight, but nope, uh, it turns out I was getting my butt beat up by this Alpha Kano, almost losing the Thylacoli in the process. Nonetheless, today I wanted to try and get a Rex army started, as they were going to be the main fighters for our bosses. So I had to go out and find some Rexes, but I found a 145 Aloe first, and I wanted to get this tamed up, as it had super, super high melee damage off the bat. Without even being tamed up, it had an absurd amount. So I needed to get this Aloe tamed up, and then we'd be sweet for Aloes, and we could breed an absolute army of them. So first off, I started by deleting its squad, and then an acro decided to get involved as well. This is just this is just lovely. I was also damaging the 145 Allo, but uh, I figured it would eat the body of its comrade once I had defeated it, and the acro. So it was just pretty much an all-out brawl until I could defeat the uh, Allo thing, and then luckily it did actually eat the corpse of its brethren. And then an RG got involved. I managed to kill the acro, kill the RG as well. So finally. I could actually get to work on trying to tame up the Aloe. Psych! Haha! <laughs> Joke's on me, there's a freaking Alpha Raptor now. And then a Brachio got involved, and well, it didn't end well. You watch this Aloe get nuked. Oh no! And our Desmodus! Oh, Fudge Knuckles. Oh, I wasn't expecting it to kill our Desmodus, I didn't think I was close enough. So after the Brachio single handedly destroying my hopes and dreams, I decided to try and take on the Alpha Raptor that had caused me so many issues, with that almost killing me as well. So I climbed the nearest mountainside I could and cried it up. I then found the 150 Rex I had sought and decided to net gun it. Realizing that didn't work, I actually built a trap for it and kited it towards the trap. Now while kiting it towards the trap, I did slowly trank it up so by the time that it would get to the trap, it would hopefully have taken a little bit of torpor damage. Now this trap was only made out of wooden billboards, obviously I didn't have any metal on me, but I figured by the time it was close to destroying the wooden billboards, I would have knocked it out. So I managed to get the back one on there eventually after taking quite a few hits in the process and thankfully the wreck's actually not even escaping. I then got to work on tranking it out, and it actually just stood there, not even attacking the billboard. So it went down within the billboards, and just like that, we had knocked out our first Giga. I then found another 140 Allo and thought I could tame that up. All I had to do was kill its friends, right? Well, I brought out Magmet, and she bit off more than... Well, she, she, she chewed through a lot more than she could chew. So she accidentally killed both of them, and that was a dream quickly <laughs> dismissed. I then found a female Rex and got to work on trying to trank her up. Once again, utilizing the same trap on the male Rex, I built a wooden billboard trap and slowly tried to kite her towards it. Obviously, with their large turning radius and their dumb brain AI, they decided not to get involved in the trap, but killed me in the process. And just like that, we managed to get killed by a Rex from glitches and bugs. Wonderful. Nonetheless, I was able to return to her and did complete knocking her out. 
it was it was a tedious journey but just like that i had managed to knock out two rexes that would hopefully be the start of my boss army and hopefully they came out with decent stats but for that to happen we obviously had to tame them first which was going to be another hurdle because we needed some mutton but I did manage to tame them with the male Rex being first and he came out with absolutely great stats. 41 HP and 36 melee damage. I was super happy with that. So I tested him out by getting him to attack some Androsarchuses and off base rate, he hit for 232. The female tamed up, she came out okay. Not as great as compared to the Rex, but that was fine. We had a, a way to breed them now. So we just needed the male's stats into a baby. The next day, I had a plan to try and take down Baylor. Now, I decided to get my tribe mate involved with this as well, and we got up to quite a bit of shenanigans. But the main goal for this was to tame up some Megatherium so that we could use them to help defeat the Baylor alongside our Giga and the Rexes that we had tamed up. So we got to work knocking out the Megatheriums and taming some up. I had a bunch of honey. He would go around knocking the majority of them out for me. And just like that, we would get ourselves a Megatherium army. So this one here was a 145, which we successfully tamed up without any issues. Now I also had to track down an Ovis because we had found another Thylacolio to tame up. So this would well, enable us to actually breed to our, our Thylas, which is perfect. But for that, obviously I needed some cooked no. mutton. So I got the cooked mutton, found the Thylacolio, and, and then I fed the Thylacolio and like chaos so? ensued between me and my yeah. tribe mate. You wanna pop it? Do you put it in the inventory? You, no, no, you put it in, okay, I'll do it. You put it in your inventory and you just use it in yours. Did it? Oh, no, it didn't work. Oh, you already used one? Yeah. Sweet. All right, sweet. Oh, you. Oh, I saw you running around with that goddamn net gun. And I knew you were going to. Come back and get the thyla. Uh, Goes me. Come back and get the thyla. There you go. Come back here. You no, I know what you want. You didn't think I would use the soul gun. Go me, come. I was gonna, come. You thought I was going to be a novice and let you... Back here. <laughs> <let me. laughs> Bye. -bye. Come back here, I swear to God. Don't make me get the Giga out. I can't yeah, fucking no. do anything. Don't whip it out. <laughs> oh, no, Gallimimus. Oh, it's a Gallimimus. It's fine. Uh. How did that not hit? I'm invisible. You don't know where I am. Looks like you need a dip in the ocean to cool off. Fuck's sake. Get him. Get him, sharks. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> what are you going to do now, goats? You look a bit stuck. Very stuck. What what is going on? Are you just like floating there? I can't hit out. It, I it's, don't know. It's, it's weird. It's, it's not carrying saying I'm you. netted. It's, it's not saying I'm netted either. It's carrying you, but I didn't I didn't hit you with anything. It's it's like carrying you. Like it picked it picked you. Oh, well, that's what I was gonna do. No. <laughs> Damn it! He didn't die. Did that hit you? No. It did, because I saw the blood splatter. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> I ran out of goddamn nets. Gunsby, come here. Gunsby. Oh, for fuck's sake, you got the rock. That's bullshit. I can't move, goddammit! Gunsby. Guys, we come back here. <laughs> I Ooh. swear to God, I'm fucking gonna get you. Guys, we. Guys, we. Guys, we stop this right now. Guys, we. <laughs> no. How did you God damn it! I was so close. <clears throat> now how do I get rid of it? Put it in again. Oi! Oi! 
You're gonna fucking behave now, boy! After messing around for a bit, I made my way back to the Wyvern Trench and found a 170 Lightning Wyvern Egg. Now, this was such a dumb decision by me, I honestly don't know why. I was gonna teleport, grab the egg as the teleport was about to end, and get out of there with the egg. But obviously that didn't work because the Wyvern decided to come in and end my life and everything part of it. So that went swimmingly. Now by the end of this we then made our way back into Baylor's cave ready to fight her with our Rex and Megatherium army. And this time I was riding on Magnet ready to absolutely decimate Baylor. And slowly but surely after losing a couple of Megatheriums in the process Baylor finally fell to our combined might. It only took me three attempts to kill one of the easiest bosses, one of the easiest world bosses anyway, on Fiorda. Next up was Haiti and Skill, as well as Steinbjorn. Now, the next few days were spent breeding up quite a large variety of dinos. We had managed to get a good line of Gigas going with Red Eyes. Giga that we used earlier, we had managed to finally hatch the eggs and raise up some imprinted Gigas as well as some tech Stergos, more Androsarcuses and Desmoduses. So I wanted to get some more Gigas raising and I actually did manage to get a melee damage mutation on one of the baby Gigas, which was absolutely awesome. That's exactly the mutation you want to get on a Giga. So we did get those guys out and started raising them up as best as we could, hopefully not allowing them to die as well in the process. And the tech stegos were going to be for some PvP action if we did eventually get around to it. But I also went ahead and built a greenhouse down in my village. So the village had quite a lot of areas around it and I decided to use the bottom area as a greenhouse. So you can see the main base was just up there and the greenhouse was down here. I did need some vegetables and stuff like that as I wanted to get some beehives going and just to have veggies to make kibble. It would make our life easier. I also went ahead and tamed up a bunch of dung beetles for the greenhouse. Obviously they're going to produce fertilizer for us, but for that to happen I needed poo. So I had to throw everything out as I didn't have enough poo and hopefully get some from them. But I tamed up my first one, my second one and my third dung beetle. And then the fourth one because it had super cool coloring and it was a really high level. Got those guys in the greenhouse producing fertilizer and we were set for the greenhouse. The next day it was finally time to take on our next world boss, Haiti and Skill. Now I had a bunch of Gigas and actually no, we only had Magmet and a bunch of Rexes, a bunch of our rock boss Rexes that we were going to use for the battle. But I was smart about how we would go about doing this. I did get the Rexes and Magmet targeting, I believe it's Haiti that does the flame attack. Um, and with Haiti getting majority of the damage dealt to first, we were able to defeat, no, sorry, my apologies. Skjol is the one that does the fire damage. Haiti is the one that does the moonlight damage. Skjol is the bigger threat because obviously that does percentage health damage, but I was able to defeat Skjol first and then I successfully managed to defeat Haiti as well. So I was super happy about that. We got some decent loot here from both of them. The main thing that we wanted was obviously their relics as this would be the best thing. But we also got a journeyman wreck saddle the first time around. And this had 70 armor and was much cheaper to make than our ascendant wreck saddle blueprint that we had gotten earlier. So I was super Happy about getting that Rex saddle from one of the Fenra twins. Now, I then built an industrial cooker in the house next to the greenhouse so that we could have somewhere to build, well, not build, but cook all of our kibble. I then went ahead and decided to take on Baylor one more time. This time, however, I had brought some more Gigas with me. I made boosted pair, so we were able to absolutely nuke the crap out of Baylor real quick. At this stage, I was just kind of farming for some loot. Here and there, uh, I wasn't strong enough to take on Steinbjorn just yet. Didn't have enough Gigas for that. But Bela, she was definitely a worthy contender for second place. So I killed Bela, searched her body for loot. We didn't really find anything too amazing, unfortunately. It wasn't anything really good. Like we found an Ascendant Spino Saddle Blueprint, but I'm not really going to use that, am I? Now, the next few days were spent getting ready for the boss fights. I wanted a bunch of metal for some wreck saddles, so I started raising up all of these tech parasaurs for slaughter, and then I went ahead and did Haiti and Skjol again. This time with the extra Giga and our Rexes, we made very quick work of them. At this stage, they were super easy to do, and I was pretty much just doing them for their runestones and 
to get loot, really. That was pretty much it. I just didn't really have much else to do other than breeding and taking on the world bosses for extra stuff. And it helped that I had a heap of runestones anyway alongside of it. I did make sure to keep 30 though because I was going to try and take on Steinbjorn at some point. The next day I finally decided to get my lazy butt into gear and actually breed those Desmodices and Andrusarkuses that I had teamed up all that time ago and get those guys incorporated into my lines. So I threw out the Andrusarkuses, I threw out the Desmodices and started trying to pair them up with which colours I would like into the line as well as with the Andrusarkuses because you know obviously I wanted the colours to be on our high stat ones instead of our low stat ones so I got them all breeding up, set up some soul terminals alongside of them in one of the cabins located in our village. I also added some chests and storage and fridges and preserving bins to the kitchen area next to the greenhouse so that we had a storage area for all the food that we were going to be cooking. Now I also built a little bit of an outside area for um, people coming by the village. A little bit of RP so that we had a bartender there serving us some drinks as well. Now there was a bit of time in between the last day and this day in terms of real life. I think it was I was gone for about a week due to uh, some issues. But thankfully someone did leave me a heavily mutated Desmodus and I decided to call it Bubblegum. As well as that I went out and decided to tame up some Deinotheriums as these guys are great creatures to bring with you to boss fights. They're able to buff all your dudes with in terms of health and defense. But first off, I had to eliminate the weaklings. There was a 150 up here that I wanted to tame, but obviously I had to dispose of the 130 and the other lower level. Once they were disposed of, I then got to work at trying to tame this up alongside someone else on the server, who thankfully I was very grateful for because they constantly saved me from getting stampeded on by the Danotherium. But slowly but surely, as I was figuring out the Danotherium's taming mechanics, as these guys had just come out, I was able to tame up my very own 150 male Danotherium without really any issues in the process to be honest. It was, a, it was a pretty easy tame once I figured out the animations. Now obviously there were quite a few times where I failed with the animations and it stampeded after me but thankfully I did have some help. And just like that the Danotherium was tamed up and then I tamed up the female as well. So we had a breeding pair with very solid stats as well. They were also glitched at this moment where the moment that I would get on them, the game would crash. So I wanted to test them out for a little bit and I sent them on a stampede across some Andrusarkuses just to see how much damage they would do. And I was very impressed and very happy to see these guys dealing damage and just being absolute monsters that they are. New day, new world boss fight again. Once again, Hades and Skull going down to our Gigas and Rexes. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Wasn't really too much noticeable loot to be honest. Bunch of blueprints, the relics, nothing too crazy and the element that we got as well. Finally, I had found myself a goddamn rock drake egg though. A 180 thing of beauty. It had only taken me a shit ton amount of time to do so. I died because the rock drake followed me outside of the cave, but thankfully our fjord hawk did bring the egg alongside with me and we were able to start incubating it. I got all of the tech parasaurs that we had, threw them out because I needed more metal and I also brought out some more of the gigas because I was going to do some more breeding for some more mutations. Hopefully getting more mutations in the process. I also went ahead and found myself a high level shadow main to tame up because the female that we had tamed up was low level. So I figured a high level female with hopefully better stats would be the best thing going forward. Sorry, it was a male, not a female. So hopefully this guy would come out with better stats and we did get it in a trap and fed it the fish baskets just like this. It was quite a tedious process, but I did manage to eventually get some more fish. <laughs> Psych, I got you there. And then I also had some sanguine Alexas alongside of it to use. Uh, but these things were bugged. I just could not get them to work for some reason when the Shadow Mane was sleeping. You could see there it grayed out and then came back into full color. I just, for some reason, could not get these to work. So I kept button spamming it until it did decide to work because this was literally the final thing that I needed to tame up the Shadow Mane. I really didn't want to go catching any more fish. They're a pain in the ass to catch. So I had no idea why the Sanguine Alexa wasn't working. I tried to get a little bit closer to it, but I obviously didn't want to wake it up as well. You can see here it was completely grayed out. Nonetheless, I put it in my hotbar, spammed it, and we did manage to tame ourselves up a Shadow Mane. And it was a thing of beauty. 
36 melee damage. Let's go, fellas. Let's do it. So I was pretty happy about that. We took it for a bit of a test run here, killing some packy rhinos. Nothing too crazy that we couldn't handle. And then I brought it back to base in order to breed it up with the females that we had at base. It hit pretty damn hard if I say so for myself. I also found this alpha raptor that I thought we could test it out on. Obviously the health and the melee damage and the natural armor of the shadow mains make them great teams for well anything really. Even boss fights they're great for boss fights as well but I had already dedicated quite a bit of time to my rex army so I didn't think I was really going to use these guys for boss fights mainly just as a travel mount I would say to get around for because yeah I don't think there was really too much of a point in starting a shadow main line for the bosses at this stage that didn't stop me from breeding them though and hopefully bringing some with us alongside to the boss fight we could always use the rexes as uh tanks and use the shadow mains as damage dealers as well finally got our rock drake hatched and it was this little cutie right here look at how adorable it is so damn cute cryo it up and i went to work at harvesting up all of the tech parasols also causing my computer to crash because when the tech parasols get harvested or killed sometimes their bodies glitch out and it can be a very fun experience for all those involved bunch of scrap metal though and got that cooking in their industrial forge a new day another hadian skull boss fight it's great having them as neighbors i can farm up a bunch of loot also ventured out into the ocean for some Alpha Lead Scythicuses, needed more runestones, managed to kill two of those, and then I wanted to get some Ammonite Bile so that I could try and tame up a Helicopteran. Now, I brought the Shadow Mains with me, obviously, because they would help a lot down here in the ocean depths, and uh, we got swarmed by a bunch of eels and frickin' jellyfish. Wonderful. So, we got paralyzed. We did manage to kill the Nidarias and slowly escape our watery prison. However, one of our Shadow Mains was not so lucky and it ended up dying to an Electrophorus. And uh, yeah, that was the chaos that we managed to get out of. Not going back in there for the other Shadow Mane, that's for sure. I then found an Alpha 2, so Toothless. Whew! Let's go, boys! And uh, begin to try and chomp on it with our Andrew Sarkis. It just wasn't attacking us for some reason. Don't know why, it wasn't complaining. Uh, but a couple of the other guys on this server as well came along to help because I did need the Alpha 2, so I. So we got to work try, slowly killing it, and then I brought Mag Med out to deal some serious damage. Now, obviously, Giggas aren't designed for the ocean, as you can no doubt imagine, but that did not stop me from bringing Mag Med out for a little bit of ocean play here, and uh, also just killing her in the process. Almost killing her being the, being the key word here, but there was an Alpha Megalodon that I wanted to kill, and mainly just to test sort of the uh, aquatic capacity of Magman and whether or not she was up to the task of defeating the Alpha Tuso. So we got to work and found the Alpha Tuso again and I swam down with Magmet. She was on a mission and we were absolutely ready to chomp the Alpha Tuso to bits. We were dealing 2000 damage a bite and the Alpha Tuso was just getting melted like butter. Oh yeah, love me some juicy Alpha Tuso bits. Managed to kill the Alpha Tuso and then I came back up to the surface with Magmet surviving in the process. Now I had found myself a 150 Helicopteran as well and I was ready to go. I had made the little ratfish treats up, which is what we needed the ammonite bile for, and I decided to feed it to uh, the helicopterin to see how it went. Now, unbeknownst to me, when you feed the helicopterin every time, it actually spawns in a swarm of megalodons. Now, I had no idea of this at the time. You also get the rage buff, so anything in the vicinity will aggro on you, including all of those spawned in megalodons that the helicopterin seems to spawn in. Nonetheless, I did manage to get the first feed onto the helicopterin, and then I continued by feeding it some more, with more megalodons coming in in the process. Now, this is where we brought out Magmet for some help. I just realized our Giga is drowning. Holy smokes, I don't know if you guys saw that, he was on 1k. After feeding the helicopter in a few more times, I found myself stuck in between some jellyfish and some sharks, which isn't a very nice combination if you're in Ark at the moment. And uh, as you can see, I was pretty much stunlocked here. Our Andrew Sarkis was getting absolutely shredded by these Nidarias. I was trying to attack with every chance that I could get, but obviously with like 10 Nidarias stunning me, it was very hard, but I slowly managed to kill them and we did get some hits in managing to damage the Nidarias and eventually I did break our Andrew Sarkis free and we managed to get back onto the ice just in time. However, not before some issues arose from that as well because I for some reason could not get onto the goddamn ice with all these sharks around us. 
And thankfully, I still managed to get onto the ice and let our Andrusarchus heal. So I had to go it alone now to finish taming up the helicopter and it needed one more treat. But of course, you know what has to happen. We feed it, it spawns in all the Megalodons and then we run for our life. I threw out bubblegum to try and use bubblegum to save me from the water. However, that didn't work out in my favor. With Bubblegum being so close to the water, we got kicked off straight away, and we got aggroed on by the sharks once again. I did manage to cryo Bubblegum up before dying in the process. Finally, the last time to feed it. I managed to feed it its final Varatfish treat, but I did die in the process, and I tried making it back there, and the helicopter and died. The next few days were spent with lots and lots of breeding. We had about six soul terminals that are absolutely filled to the brim with dinos. So it's just a matter of getting all of those guys raised up and breeding the selected stats that we wanted. However, I did want to breed up some Shadow Mane, so I got them breeding as well to try and get their stats consolidated because I was planning on using some Shadow Mains for the boss fight. And I also threw out our Rexes to get them breeding as I had consolidated our boss stats. Now, I did also want to raise the Danotheriums as well. We had bred some Danotheriums with Reds Danotheriums, uh, and that had resulted in some very high-level Danotheriums. And I also tamed up a lower-level Helicopter to actually take a look at what it did. Now, I believe this one was only a level 20 tame, uh, and it took like two Ratfish treats and it was done. And I wanted to see what it could do. So, it was a pretty impressive team. It had quite a few attacks. It wasn't really that strong, but the jump out of the water was really what sold me on it, to be honest. <laughs> Not even the fact that it grinds up items into uh, blueprints. The fact that it could jump out of the water is what absolutely sold it for me. So, we decided to test out its grinding feature by chucking in a uh, Fiomia saddle to see if it would manage to convert it into a saddle blueprint. Uh, and it's such a cool animation where it grinds it up with its jaw. Now, this was an actual prehistoric shark as well, by the way, just in case you weren't aware. That jaw that they had is pretty damn accurate. So, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the Fiomia saddle didn't make it, but we figured out what to do. So, the rest of the days was spent breeding up Gigas, breeding up the Danotheriums, breeding up Shadow Mains, Rexes. We were slowly assembling our army and imprinting on it as well. And then it was finally time to face Steinbjorn. Now, Steinbjorn was the only world boss that I hadn't defeated. And the reason for that was because I just kind of wanted to use Gigas on him, to be honest. Uh, Gigas would be the best way to defeat him. They bypass his natural rock armor that he's got. So I brought along three Gigas in hopes that we could defeat Steinbjorn, as well as a Danotherium to actually buff our Gigas as well. Uh, and the Danotherium was just chilling at the back there. However, it did want to try and get involved in the fight. And I really didn't want it to get involved in the fight. But uh, we were pretty much shredding Steinbjorn. With our buff from our Dano Theorem, we were managing to do an extra like 300 damage across the board on each Giga, which was great. However, our Dano Theorem was in the middle of the little freaking fight, trying to do its best to help out. And with that, Steinbjorn was defeated. We had finally defeated our final world boss and received its relic. And we also got a glider suit in the process. Uh, so I was pretty happy about that. And a little bit of element, gacha saddle, and I believe a Magmasaur saddle. He has a lot. That is a lot of Danotheriums. They, our ones are still raising up and it's been like a very long time. They, they're definitely on par with Gigas. Holy smack it. The next day I handpicked a stat that I wanted from some Danotheriums and this Danotherium had a crap ton of health and I wanted to get it into my lines. So we bred it up with Red's Danotherium and we had our own lines. And then it was time to start gathering the artifacts. So we headed out into the cave gathering the artifact of the immune and the artifact of the pack as well as the artifact of the clever and that was three of our artifacts down. I then went ahead and took a little bit of a tour of uh, Red Eye's base as we had seen it progress over the time and it looked absolutely awesome at this stage. They had really done it up a lot better. Uh, well, not a lot better, but a lot more nicer with more features and stuff and it looked awesome. So we took our time just scoping out their base, taking a look at it, and, and just enjoying the scenery like around that. it. Look at those. Those guys look dope. And then the Shadow Mane's up here. It looks cool. I like how it's uh, half on the ground, half on foundations. That's, that's dope. What is that thing in the middle? Now on my quest for the artifacts, we stumbled across a great loot crate. Holy sm- Oh my god, are you kidding me? What the shit? Bro, get down. I need to get this before we fucking die. 
I really wish there was a separate button for landing and latching. Stop latching to the fucking roof. Bro, this is... Oh, hallelujah. All right, that is an Ascendant Giga Saddle. Not a blueprint. Holy shit! 123 armor, give me that! After claiming the Giga Saddle, I then went ahead and claimed the artifact of the Skylord and made my way back to base to continue up with some breeding. We got twin Danotheriums with the health mutation, not the health mutation, the health stat that we wanted, so I was cheering about that. Now, the next few days, well, I mean, the rest of the time was pretty much spent farming up the tribute items that we needed. We also tamed up some aquatic creatures as I needed them to get into the cave. Uh, that was underwater with the last artifact that we needed. However, I seem to have lost that footage, so I do apologize for that. But we also tamed up some Megalodons as well to farm up some of the tribute items that we needed. And it was pretty much chilling until day 100, essentially. So yeah, just breeding, lots of breeding, lots of raising, and murdering of lots of little babies. Now, finally, the time had come to fight the Alpha Bosses. First up was the Alpha Broodmother. Now, we also brought along all the other people on the server to do this. We had gathered the artifacts and everything, and we were ready to absolutely decimate the Broodmother. Now, you can see here, it got absolutely nuked with our Danosuchuses and the Rexes that we had brought to the fight. And it was a straight-up bloodbath for the poor Broodmother. She really did not last all that long with our Yudis buffing our Rexes and our Danosuchuses. I had taken some time off because I did get quite sick, so the community was able to progress with their tames and hence why we went ahead and defeated the bosses as well. So that was the Alpha Broodmother taken down. All we needed to defeat now was the Megapithecus and the Dragon. So we teleported into the Megapithecus arena once again with some Rexes, a Shadow Mains, and some Danosuchuses ready to absolutely shred the Megapithecus. And if you thought the Broodmother went down quickly, well then you'd be in for one hell of a shock because the Megapithecus goes down even quicker. Hey. Okay. Next up was the dragon. Now, the dragon, everyone knows how to defeat it nowadays. Daenonychuses are the way to go. So, everyone hopped on a Daenonychus and we got to work at absolutely shredding up the dragon with our bleed damage. Honestly, this was obviously the hardest boss. We didn't have any Wyvern milk popped at the moment, but uh, we ran in there straight away and we were like, you know what, we can do this with our Daenonychuses and we should be okay. So away we went doing the bleed damage to the dragon. While it was aggroed on a Rex, we were able to get in there pretty easily and just absolutely nuke the alpha dragon. Once you realize how to do it with the Daenonychus, it's really not too much of a threat. Like, you could easily do this solo, and I have done this solo as well. So, it was pretty quick work for the Alpha Dragon going down pretty quickly. Look, you can see the tick damage there, doing 6,500 damage each tick. Absolutely crazy. So, Alpha Dragon was going down pretty damn quickly. Next up was Alpha Fenra. It was then time to face Fenra. Now, I brought my Danotheriums alongside the Yudis and the Rexes so that we could buff everything up altogether. As obviously Fenra is probably the most dangerous of the bunch of them as he does have the ability to freeze you off your mount and that can result in you dying which results in all of your dinosaurs dying in the process. But other than that, we didn't really have too many issues. We kind of just hung back, let the Rex do their AI thing, and we just hung back buffing them with the Dano Theorems. I really didn't want to risk going in there and uh, getting myself killed in the process, because obviously that would be a terrible way to go out. And I also brought some Shadow Mains along as well. And slowly but surely, we whittled down Alpha Fenra until he was at about half health, and... Things just went pretty smoothly from there on out, which honestly is a godsend because normally whenever I do boss fights, everything just goes to absolute crap. So this was a very nice welcome change to see that we could actually finally do something. Now I did decide to get here into the mix of things as well, bring my Dano Theorem in to do a little bit of battling. I know I said I shouldn't, but hey, I figured why not? Alpha Fender I was going down slowly, I shouldn't die in the time it takes to kill him. And we can get into a little bit of combat 
with the Dano Theorems. These guys just genuinely blow me away at their size. Like, look at us towering over all the Rexes and even Fenrir himself. I absolutely love the Dano Theorems. It's a shame they're not part of the official arc. But just like that, Fenrir went down and we got ourselves a cryopodded Fenrir and the Tech Sword and Grant. And just like that, guys, I had survived 100 days with my community on Fjorda. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one today. If you did, don't forget to check out the servers. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below for more. But other than that, I will catch you in the next one. And thank you very much for watching.